Okay, we have looked at using Revolution R to do the standard kind of analytics, numeric quantitative kind of analytics. Today we'll look at some other kinds of analytics that are done on big data. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to discuss is how to plot word clouds. Uh, now the importance of this is that although till now organizations are focused more mainly on quantitative data, they receive a lot of qualitative data. So for example, uh, today you have an organization, people are tweeting a lot about the organization, right? So there's a lot of stuff posted on Facebook about organizations. There's uh, people tweeting about organizations. And then of course the organization itself receives a lot of textual email. And then there are newspaper articles, blog posts. You know, there's so much of textual information that is floating around about uh, general things and about organizations. Now, how do you take a look at all this textual information that is posted and try to get a sense of what is going on? You know, what are the concerns? Uh, what are the things that people associate with, the, with an organization? Those kinds of things. Okay, so that's what we are looking at. And one way to do that is by plotting what is called as a word cloud. And we'll take a look at that right now. Let's take a look at an example of uh, a word cloud. So for example, you know, a political candidate might be wanting to find out, you know, what are the people or the supporters or people who are tweeting about them, talking about, or generally they may uh, take a look at a lot of blogs and see which words are coming up uh, a lot, right? And here, of course, this is a word cloud that's created based on a corpus of text. And the size of the words represents the frequency with which the word occurs. So obviously, the words tax and system and people, work, benefit, need, income, these are the words that are coming up much, much more frequently. So that's an example of a word cloud. Uh, so even though you're given a lot of unstructured data that is posted all over the place, you can still try to extract meaning from that kind of data. And you do that by using word clouds. Okay, so let's take an example of uh, uh, code to do word clouds and I'll give you the file as well. Okay, so the packages that we'll be using in order to do word cloud are uh, the packages TM for standing for text mining and then there are a couple of other packages called snowball C and word cloud which have a lot of other functions that you can use. Now I have commented out uh, the section installed out packages because obviously you're going to do that only once. Uh, so when you see the code that I give you it will be commented uh, for the first time, you can uncomment and, and run this code. Okay, so we wrote the libraries, library TM, library Snowball C, library Word Cloud. And then uh, if for this exercise, what we'll do is we'll use a file called uh, Jeopardy CSV CSV. And what this has is simply all the Jeopardy questions, of information about 200 and uh, I think about 200,000 plus Jeopardy questions. Okay, so that gives you a nice corpus of words connected to one particular topic. And we may want to see, a, create a word cloud of the words that occur in those questions. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do here. It's a CSV file. So we read it. We're just using regular R here. We're not using revolution R. So the we read the information, CS, uh, read.csv, and into this data frame called JEPQ. And by default, R uses strings as factors equals true. That means anything that's a string, R converts it into a factor. Uh, of course, all the Jeopardy questions are strings, but in this case, we're not really interested in converting into a factor because we want to take that text and analyze it as a text. Okay, so that's why we say strings as factors equals false. Okay, and then before we can analyze it, now what's happened is that all of the information about the questions is in the form of a data frame. So obviously, every question is in a row by itself, okay? Now, what we want to do is to put the information from all the questions together into one single document. And typically, text mining programs convert text into a form called as a corpus. They call it a corpus. And once they have a corpus, they have uh, the, the data structure corpus has lots of different ways of analyzing a corpus. 
okay so first we're creating a corpus by calling it jep corpus is corpus and this is a function in the tm package corpus and you know vector source is another function in the package jep dollar question okay so jep q is the data frame question is one of the attributes of the data frame so what we are telling it is well take the each question convert it into a vector source and convert the result into a corpus okay we don't really need to know much more about the details of how this happens it just converts it into a corpus and of course uh, the next thing we want to do is to convert the corpus into just a plain text document so we are saying tm map jep corpus plain text document okay so now essentially what has happened is all the text from all of the questions on jeopardy has now become a plain text document from this plain text document we can now go ahead and create a word cloud but of course before we create a word cloud there are a lot of things we need to do to make sure that we don't get any junk okay so for example you can take out all punctuations we, we are not interested in punctuations anymore right commas periods semicolons quotes get rid of all of them that's one kind of processing we we'll need to do and then another kind of processing we we'll need to do is well whether a word is in uppercase or lowercase doesn't really matter for us so convert everything let's say to lowercase right so those kinds of processings we'll do before we go ahead and actually create a, a word cloud okay so that's what we are doing here okay so for example jep corpus is tm map jep corpus remove punctuation okay so if you do that it removes all the punctuation and then convert to lowercase and that's what we are doing here content transformer to lower done that converts everything to lowercase right and then there are a lot of words in english language which are which occur often and are not important words you know for example in on this that and you know were where things like that you know those are words which uh, in text mining are generally called as stop words and if you include those and create a word cloud then obviously the and this will occur the most number of times no matter what the subject matter is right so we get rid of all of those stop words and that's exactly what we are doing here tm map jep corpus remove words see the and this and stop words english right so this stop words english in fact if you type that all by itself in the r command line after loading all these packages you'll see the list of words which are considered as stop words in english right of course you might be doing text mining for some other language in which case you would put that particular language there okay uh, so here we've got this and for whatever reason the and this are not included in that list of stop words so we have just included them to make sure that they are also removed right so at the end of this we've got a document with no punctuation everything in lower case and none of these commonly occurring words that we are not interested in okay but finally we also would generally like to stem the documents what that means is let's say you have a word like run right so you may have uh, variations of that like running ran etc right so various occurrences and various forms of occurrences of basically the same root word okay so getting uh, rid of all the duplications in terms of this is called the process of stemming right so if it sees the word running it will just convert it to run <coughs> right studying running etc all these would get uh, the stem of the word would be kept and the rest of it would be removed okay so once you have done all this you've got a fairly good corpus which is ready now for word cloud creation okay so we can then go ahead and create the word cloud it's very easy word cloud jep corpus max words equals 100 that is obviously if you take 215000 uh, jeopardy questions there are going to be lots and lots of words and if you create a cloud for all the words then the cloud will be really really big right so we are saying plot a word cloud of only the 100 most frequently occurring words okay so that's what happens and so this is Uh, this is the word cloud that you get so for example the most frequently occurring word apparently happens to be name uh, by far one first play uh, make type state 
country, etc. Okay, so that just gives you an idea of how to plot, uh, create a word cloud. Okay, uh, so how might we use this word cloud in other scenarios? Right, so for example, uh, an organization may receive a lot of customer support emails and they may want to find out what are the top concerns that customers have. Okay, then a word cloud would be useful. Or in Seton Hall, for example, we have our course evaluation system. Apart from the numerical evaluations, students submit a lot of textual evaluations, right? So the dean or other people in the administration would want to find out, well, you know, how can they get an overall picture of what students are thinking about the courses, okay? So they can find out what are the top concerns. Uh, overall speaking, uh, are there any negative words that turn up as prominent words, right? If we know that, then we can use that to address and correct issues that happen okay so that is the way in which sentiment analysis I'm sorry uh, word clouds can be used to try and make sense of tons and tons of pure textual information